Alright, welcome. This episode features a mini Countryman S 2011. First of all, let's start with the smart chart, just so we make sure we don't forget to look for anything. When shopping for a car, you need to go through the exterior condition, the engine condition, the interior condition, make a test drive if it's possible, and then check the mileage. Okay, so that's the handbrake. Just keep in mind that there is really no way to be 100% sure a used car won't need any repairs. What I would like to share throughout my work is ways to minimize the risk and deal the best price as fairly as possible. Paint job. You're looking for inconsistencies in paint job. Panels that seems to be lighter or stronger in color than the rest of the car. Usually you need the sun to be shining bright in order to kind of see how the light plays on the paint. Body condition. As always, this should be the most obvious part. When you're walking around the car, look for any dings, broken parts, scratches, rust, inconsistent alignments in between the hood, panels, bumpers and doors. Honestly, it doesn't feel like it has been in a crash. In my opinion, it's just badly protected from the manufacturer. Just the finishing isn't good. That's what it seems like, at least. Wheels and tires. First of all, look and see if all four tires are the same make and model. Then, take a simple penny, insert it in between the tire tread, it will give you a rough estimation on how deep they are. Finally, check the rims for scratches, pothole damage and padded paint. Headlamps and tail lights. Check if the headlamps are becoming blurred and yellow. This is common with non-UV treated transparent plastic. With time and sunshine, they slowly degrade. This means Either the car was sitting too long facing the sun or the car has spent most of its life on the road. This is why sometimes yellow blurred headlamp can give you a rough estimation on the actual mileage. Sunroof. At this stage of the investigation, you simply want to verify that all the windows are closed tight and properly. The sunroof can unalign after a crash, so inspect it as well. First of all, check the oil level before you start the engine. Once that's done, start it up and listen. Ideally, a cold start is the best way for checking an engine. If it's too rough, you know it's usually packing a big load of mileage. Exhaust gas color. Meanwhile, check the colored gas coming out of the exhaust. Is there any oil as well? There is three main colors that could indicate engine failure. Dark black, blue or white gray. The usual color should not be noticeable in summer and very light gray in winter. Oil leaks. While the engine is running, check for any oil leak under the engine bay. Engine bay inspection. After letting the engine heat up to normal temperature, it's the perfect time to inspect the engine bay. So check and see if there is any weird smells, whether it's coolant fluid or burnt smell. Look for any steam or smoke all around the engine. Then if the dipstick is available, check the oil level again. Try and smell it as well. Rusted engine parts. Usually when a car is not driven for a long amount of time, either because it has been into an accident waiting to be repaired, or because it's simply not being driven enough, some parts, as well as engine parts, tend to accumulate surface rust. So look around for rusted engine parts, as well as rusted frame and engine bay panels.
The car must have been boosted at least once. Interior condition. Look for any interior wear mark. This kind of cars, the mileage plays a big part in their values. So right, what so the we key. need to do is find clues all around that can justify the mileage. Look for any unusual wear and tear on the steering wheel, seats, switches. And any unusual condition could be caused by excessive use, which should indicate a relatively high mileage. Seat belts it's are made in a specific way so they lock when the car gets into a crash. You have to replace them in order to put the car back on the road. They are expensive parts to buy directly from the dealers. So when you're desperate, you get into the black market looking for stolen parts. Those bad people on the black market, they malhandle parts. Once they have been removed from stolen cars, they basically throw them away in their yards, waiting for customers. Meanwhile, those parts accumulate dirt, rust, and all kind of nasty stuff. Nobody bothers cleaning them up before installing them. That's the best explanation I was able to come up with after witnessing numerous recent cars with seat belt in terrible states. All windows and sunroof. Check if all the windows are working properly, open them up and close them down. windshield wipers don't forget to check if the windshield wipers show any malfunction finally if you can you must take it for a test drive i would suggest to drive it in city roads until it heats up then take it on the highway turn off the radio i'm sure it will be on because they don't want you to listen to the car so turn off the radio and just listen tell the salesman to be quiet just so you can focus mileage after going through that smart chart thoroughly you really should begin to have an idea on the actual mileage of the car so check it out at the very end of your investigation if the shown number makes you uncomfortable walk away or try and get the best deal as fairly as possible cluster lights Check and see if any cluster lights are on. Each light could indicate needed maintenance. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Whether you're looking to buy or to be entertained by nice car footage, be sure to subscribe and scroll through my channel. There's much more stuff about cars. Take care and goodbye.